thank you for coming to this workshop, for coming to uh, Belgrade. Is everyone having fun this weekend? Good. <laughs> so first of all, I'd love for, uh, to introduce my assistants. Um, I'm so thankful that there's people showing up to help me help you get more c content created, right? Um, I have Chauvin here. She's from the Netherlands. There is Doreen, and he's from Belgrade. Hi. Olga is here. She's from Belgrade, from, from Russia. How cool is that? Then we have Bridget and Jen from the US, and Robert from the Netherlands. So I just feel so blessed. Um, we are going to talk uh, about content planning to do today. How many of you stare at a white screen sometimes and do that for three minutes? Oh well, there's so, so much else I need to do and I'll try it another time. Good. Let me tell you a secret. It happens to me too. Um, I have no issues writing content for clients, but when it comes to writing content for myself, there's always something more urgent, right? I hope to change it by making it easier for you. Um, I have a link here on that page. You will find a copy of the slides you can download, you can uh, check back later. But there's also a little workbook with the templates of the exercises we'll be doing um, so that hopefully it will become even easier for you to get that content published. But then, <laughs> It's the same dress, I just never realized. <laughs> Who am I to teach you about content marketing? Well, last year I went to Paris and I didn't know one single person at the conference. I had been to other WordCamps before in the US, but those people I got to know there weren't in Paris. I got to meet some amazing people, among whom Bridget and Jen, who encouraged me to start speaking. And a year later, I'm part of the marketing team, even co-leading it. This is the first of the fourth time speaking. So wonderful things can happen if you join this community, right? This is the most irresponsible slide ever, but it's just to give you a quick overview of the things that I have done over time with WordPress and with the community. So I just go on quickly. A year and a half ago, I moved back from overseas to the Netherlands. And that sort of made me freak out because living in a tiny island, I was kind of, it's easy to be an expert there because there's simply not so many people living there. Then moving back to a country where there's so many marketing professionals, I was like, what am I gonna do? So certifications always help, right? So I collected some certifications to get some sort of, um, extra level of she knows what she's doing, but then again, networking helps more. That's short about me right now. Uh, over, actually, over 10 years, I work with business owners, uh, mainly in the financial services and real estate industry, and I help them um, find out who their ideal client is so that their marketing is more focused, and then I help them create content and campaigns to get those relations started and, and nurtured. And to talk about you guys, I'm going to ask you to do a little exercise. Um, you probably have heard of an elevator pitch. pitch. Um, this is sort of based on the elevator pitch, and I'm not a big fan of an elevator pitch, but it helps you define quickly who your ideal client is, or at least have some basic outlines of it, and that's why I like to use it for this uh, this workshop. So you're already sitting in pairs, and if you're not sitting in pairs, please find someone to pair with, because we will be working in pairs um, most of the time today. <coughs> so while you're finding that new place and you're making new friends, why would I do an exercise like this? Well, I have three reasons. One is, one of the things I learned um, doing marketing, but also being a business owner, is it's always good to, so to meet someone new. Um, sometimes that's not easy, and sometimes you just, I, I just like to help people put in that position where they need to meet someone new. Um, 
Well, talking about what you do, you will get to know your new, your, your brainstorming partner for today a little bit better. And by the end of this, you'll have a basic version of who your ideal client is. So here's the template. I work with the sort of name, short description of your ideal client, who want to, so what are they trying to accomplish? I help them learn, create, achieve, so what do you do for them? And what is the ideal result so that, that you accomplish? And I'll give you myself as an example. I'm Yvette Sonfeld, you knew that already. I work with business owners in the services industry, mainly real estate financial services. They want to make, uh, use inbound marketing to attract better targeted leads and clients. I help them get clear on who the other client is, and then I help them build content and campaigns, email mainly, that build trust and real relations, so that they get to work with more clients who appreciate them as a person and as a professional, and we need more of that in the world, right? They pay fast and they pay well. It's not a big problem anywhere with business owners. And the best one even sends leads their way that they think you're a right fit for. So please partner up with your, um, with your buddy for today. Take some quick notes for the other. So one will be talking, the other one will be um, writing that down and you'll exchange paper if you have. Does everyone have paper? Um, is, is there paper around by any chance? I totally did. Can you pass some around? Can you share some? Um. Yeah, there's some. Oh, some pa even post-it notes. That will work. Perfect. Um. So what really helps in this exercise is if you tell someone else doing what you do using this template, it will come out smoothly, uh, more easily. You, won't, you're, you hopefully won't need to feel you need to think about it des that much. Um, and all of a sudden, you have that outline. <clears throat> so if you don't have paper, raise your hand. Someone will hand it to you. And in the meanwhile, let's go. So the first person will have about three minutes. If you're done early, just look at me and smile so I know that everyone is ready. We can move on earlier. Yes. Yeah. Nails, these little papers are enough. These little papers are enough. That will work. It's, it's easy to exchange too. So if you do get stuck, raise your hands, our assistant will just come and help you out.
Yeah. Oh, good. Do it. And help each other if you want. If they're... Help each other. Just play along. So I'm going to need you to wrap up the first turn. In five, four, three, two, one. Can I get everyone's attention back here, please? Awesome. One of the things I love most about this kind of things is I get to watch you interact. I get to see sparkling eyes. I get to see people passionate about what they're doing. And when it comes to creating content, people want to see that passion back in your content. Okay? So we're going to flip, change. Um, the other person is going to talk now. And go. Oh, I'm in the way. Sorry. <laughs> this is the user part, yes. So I'm going to need you to wrap it up. In five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, thank you. So what are we going to do for the rest of this hour? We're going to talk quickly about the most commonly made mistakes. We're going to talk about pillars of expertise. And we're going to start playing with the matrix method that I developed. Um, it is a quick workshop, so it, you'll get to start playing around. If you have any questions, I'll be around all day. Um, and there will be plenty of ways to keep in touch with me, so don't hesitate. Um, and. Hopefully at the end of the day, you'll be better able to bite beat writer's block, you'll be more comfortable sharing your message, and you'll be ready for next steps like SEO, audio, video, funnels, and campaigns. So what are those mistakes? I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly because I wanna get you working. Um, number one, not planning content at all, because what will happen 
If you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? There will always, like I said, there will be always something more urgent, and it's a top recipe for writer's block. Reason number, mistake number two is not planning for your ideal client, because if you write too general, um, they don't feel like they resonate with you, you won't feel um, um, they won't start feeling that personal connection. Who knows this one? People buy from people day? No, like, and trust. There, no, like, and trust. Very important. Especially in this field we're working in, the web developers, the marketers, the uh, SEO people, the content people. It's a business, it's, it's a job where we work closely together, so we need that know, like, and trust. So if someone is looking for a professional working for you, the questions they will ask is, can they relate, can this person relate to where I am now? Is he or she qualified to help me accomplish my goal? And will it be fun to work with me? Who has had a bad experience, like dragging themselves to an assignment to a project? No one? Oh, good. And then we don't want that, right? We want more fun in our lives. Then who is this ideal client? And this is a very short, short version of it. It has all characteristics, or at least most characteristics, of your favorite clients. They have a need, but also a deadline, because if there's no pain, there's probably not going to be any action. And they thrive on your mix of expertise and personality. So there may be, competition may be extreme, but there will always pe be people that will resonate with you and not with the other 100. Don't forget that. And they follow a fairly predictable path to purchase, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Then mistake number three is not planning for the buyer's journey. There will not be any flow in content. There will no, be no clear calls to action. You won't be inviting them to a next step. And as a result of that, you're, there's no way you can follow up with them and start building their relation because people on average need seven contact moments to be able to be ready to purchase. So you need them to come back to your website or to your social media, otherwise you won't get up to seven. So this buyer journey, very quick, has three stages and I'll explain more about that in a minute. The awareness stage, also called the problem aware stage, the consideration stage, oh, that was the wrong button. This one, uh, where's the light? There. The consideration stage, when they're solution aware, and then the decision stage, when they're product aware. So what am I talking about? When they're becoming aware of a problem, they feel that they have a need, be it a pain, a problem, a frustration, a dream, it may even be, going on that big trip they had been dreaming about so long and they do want to make that happen now. So what do they need to know when they're in this stage? What will happen if they do nothing? If all of a sudden you have an itch appear on your leg and you do nothing um, and they will start Googling for that, you may want to explain them what could happen if they don't do anything. And what are their options if they want to solve it? Uh, one that's not on here that I'm thinking of right now is, does this problem, does this itch, does this pain even have a name? Because they will probably, if you revert it to medical terms, they will start looking for Googling for symptoms first and then find out that there's actually a name for it or there could be different sorts of problems that is causing their pain. When they're Get, they're knowing more about what is happening in their lives. They will find some general solutions and they need to find out and, and, and evaluate which, which general solution could work best for them, what the pros and the cons are of the general solutions um, and which one would suit that person, their personality, their budget best. When they have an idea about that, they move into the decision stage they have chosen a solution type. For, uh, for instance, if that would be about web design, it could be either I do it all by myself because I have more time on my hand than money, or I get a template custom created and I do content myself, or I'm looking for a full service solution. Um, 
they have done their research on some service providers. So what agency would be willing to do what, uh, what I am looking for? And then they need to make a choice which one fits my vision, my budget, and my, uh, my personality best. So mini recap quiz. What are the three mistakes? What's one? Yeah, number two? Yeah, and number three? There. Okay, pillars of expertise. If you are helping a client accomplish their goal, you usually do that by offering a variety of services, right? And uh, the variety of services you can divide into categories which are sort of your specializations. Um, and if you are using content to build a reputation, you want to get that reputation in those fields of your expertise, and I call them your pillars of expertise. <clears throat> so you want to get them where they want to be. Most businesses have three to five fields or pillars of expertise, and that will help get them to their goal. And I want to take you, you can do this by yourself, you can do this uh, as a pair. I have about five minutes to work on those pillars of expertise. I'll give you a quick example. Mine are strategy coaching, consultancy, content marketing, and email marketing. If you have a hosting company, for instance, you would have hosting, they do domains, and for instance, they help you with security. An agency could be helping out with branding, with promotional material, collateral, and with content. So, what are yours? I'll give you five minutes. It doesn't need to be perfect, just have a general idea. Help each other out, and if you get stuck, raise your hand and someone will come and help you out. In five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Were you able to get some outlines done? What I want you to do is look at your partner, give each other a high five for your accomplishment. Anyone wants to share what their biggest takeaway is of today? The new thing they're going to implement tomorrow? Raise your hand. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> no? I thought you said who is going to implement those from tomorrow. Well, that is good. We want that. But anything in particular you say, hey, that was handy to know. No? Okay. Any questions? Oh. Uh, I think so I'm actually a content writer and, um, and, and I do some planning, but I, I really appreciate this matrix of the. I've never considered it a lot from that sort of buyer's journey before. It's mm -hmm. really, a really cool way of doing this. Okay, well, thank you. Any questions? No? Then thank you. Oh, you have a question? How many times did you was needed for you to develop that matrix? And it was sort of a step-by-step -step process. There was someone that was using a matrix, um, and he used the um, uh, he used topics, but it wasn't. At, um, and then there was somebody else who was much about calls to action. And there was, again, someone else who said, who, who said content for a buyer's journey. And then I thought, I like this idea of a matrix because you have something to fill out. Um, and why not combine the thing? So I think it developed sort of over two, three, the last two, three years to what it is now. And we're never done learning, right? So it will probably develop further. Okay, well, th oh yeah?
Well, personally, from my perspective, since most of the people mm -hmm. come to this workshop because they don't get any content published, I would say the one topic that, the one outline that looks at you, you want to write me first, you want to write me first, do that one and publish it. And then look at the next one. Because by the time you have 10 articles published, you already have so much more confidence and then you may want to look at it from a conversion perspective or from a lead generation perspective, but first get that confidence. And that's also with length of articles. Just start with between 300 and 500 words. Is that going to get you the big placement in SEO in Google? No, but it will get you published and it will get people to notice you. Okay? Anything else? And here's my big applause for you guys. Well done, and thank you for coming.